Bill Gates, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. It's great to be on. <laughs> Let's uh, jump straight into the first question that everybody would want me to ask. You delivered a TED talk where you predicted pretty much what is happening now. Now, thanks to the world we live in, that has sprouted a bunch of conspiracy theories, everything from Bill Gates invented this virus to prove himself right, or he knew it was gonna happen, and that's why he said it. Was that TED talk about this virus, or was that a hypothetical that has now come true? Well, I didn't know specifically uh, that it'd be coronavirus and that it would hit in late 2019. But the goal of the talk was to encourage governments to make the investments so we could respond very quickly and keep the case numbers very, very low. And so sadly, this is not a case where, you know, I feel like, hey, I told you so. Mm -hmm. uh, it, because we didn't use that time when it was clear as the biggest threat to kill millions of people to have the diagnostic standing by, to be ready to ramp up a, a vaccine factory. A few things were done. Uh, some countries, our foundation funded some work that will help with the vaccines now, will help with the diagnostics, but uh, you know, most of what was called for, particularly in a New England Journal of Medicine article I did that went into way more specifics than I could in a, a short TED talk, uh, those things didn't get done, and so that's why it's taking us a long time to get our act together uh, faced with this threat. Here's a question I have um, as an individual. How is it that you, as a non-government, knew this information and knew that it needed to be act on, acted on, and governments and organizations that are specifically tasked with protecting people from this very thing either didn't have the information or ignored it. What, what do you think happened there? Because I know you interact with governments, you talk to organizations like the CDC, like the WHO. What went wrong? Well, there are lots of individuals uh, who were as worried as I was. You know, people like Dr. Fauci, who've been through various epidemics. And so we, when we had Ebola, Zika, SARS, MERS, we were lucky that they didn't transmit very easily. They weren't uh, these respiratory viruses where somebody who's not very symptomatic and is still walking around can spread the disease in some cases to literally dozens of people. So the respiratory transmission, particularly because world travel is so intense, that's where I show the simulation in that speech and say, this keeps me up at night um, more than even war, which is no small thing. And yet, in terms of being systematic about, okay, let's run a simulation and see how would we reach out to the private sector for tests or ventilators and uh, what kind of quarantine would we do and we, as we enter into this, we haven't practiced at all. And so you can see it's, you know, every state is being forced to figure things out on their own. And mm -hmm. uh, it's very ad hoc. It's not like when a war comes and we've done, you know, 20 simulations of various types of threats. And we've made sure that the training, communications, logistics, all those pieces fall into place very rapidly. You are in an interesting position where in many ways you are an expert on this topic because of the work that you now do in philanthropy. You know, your, your goal has been to eradicate malaria across the globe, focusing in Africa. You work with infectious disease, you work with experts in and around infectious disease. When you look at the coronavirus as it stands now, it's happened, leaders acted late, but what do you think needs to be done going forward? You wrote an interesting op-ed about this, but what do you think we need to do from the ground up, from the people to the leaders to, to the private sector? Well, the main tools we have right now are the behavioral change, the social distancing, which uh, often means staying at home most of the time, and the testing capacity to identify who in particular uh, needs to get isolated and then testing their contacts uh, to make sure that we can catch it so early that a lot of people who get sick don't infect anyone else. 